and another upgrade from KZ, this time from a more expensive IEM, the AS10, which is an IEM without any dynamic drivers and with just 5 balanced armatures per side. Um, they now released the AS10 Pro, which again has 5 balanced armatures per side and I just never listened to a balanced armature only IEM, so I was really curious about that and want to share my thoughts here with you. Usually you don't get a lot with the uh, KZ or CCA packaging, there's just a really little cardboard box that you can basically discard after opening, but this one looks a little bit better. I think these are the usual um, KZ tips, uh, black cloth things. Oh, but you get foam tips. Paper stuff, I am Eartips cable, nice little warranty card. Built on the AS10 Pro feels really solid. It's pretty chunky, but I really like the uh, design here with the shapes on the back plate and just the glassy metallic look. Just looks really luxurious. And yeah, you, you can already see it's kind of a fingerprint dust. Magnet just like a little bit there on the the shapes yeah, but you don't really see it if you do not look that close um, So it looks quite cool. What, what I also really like is that you can see some Tuning or dampening foam inside there. I've never seen this before in an IEM looks interesting to me <laughs> So it really, it definitely looks and feels like a higher quality KZIM. Still, ear tips are typical. The, this black um, silicon cloth mixture ear tips. You do get a pair of foam tips additionally, but just the typical KZ cable we all know and accept, more or less. Otherwise, it's a pretty cool build and feels really solid. Comfort-wise, these are a bit weird. The nozzle seems to be quite long and I actually had to be a bit careful because it would be at the end of my ear canal or something, like just for a second when I put it in. So I had to be a bit more careful when I really tried to make them seal well. It's also an all around big IEM, but once it sits, it does sit well and I got a good seal. I didn't have to fumble around for an eternity. The, the first moment it felt a bit weird. And again, it's just the nozzle where I can definitely see uh, people taking an issue with it. It's also big in the sense that, that it is protruding out of your ear quite a bit. So if that's important to you that you do not want to look like you have like stones in your ear, then that's a point to consider. This is also one of the first IEMs where I really get some type of tube or I don't know, not cabin pressure, but just... Well, you know, when you get a really good seal and then you plug out your IEMs too fast, it hurts a bit. Yeah, I know that can happen with most IEMs, but with these here, I have it basically every time. And I have to be like a bit more careful putting them out of my ear and doing it kind of slow. Because otherwise it's, it's like a little bit uncomfortable for a second. Taking these points to the side, wearing these, it's fine. They do not hurt, they do not feel uh, clunky in my ear or something. I can wear these without any issues. But yeah, you have to think about all the other stuff around that. So maybe I should stop buying so many KZ products because they do tend to stick with their new house sound outside of the balanced and hi-fi versions of some IEMs. For example, these remind me quite a bit of the ZS10 Pro 2 that I recently reviewed and that I just did not like that much. There are some clear differences here though, so let's go through the sound together and start with bass. The lower frequencies are very clean and controlled. It is a bit boosted, but this is by far not a bass set I am. It lacks that big and rumbly bass, but what you get to hear is really nice to listen to. It's tight and it's fast. There's a bit of a punch there and drums sound nice in the context of a rock song, for example, and also bass guitars still have that nice clean growl to them. But you do notice that the lower the bass gets in a song, the less it is present, 
which can be bothersome with electronic stuff where you need that strongly present depth here. It does that um, quite okay. It's just, I guess, with the, with the same base emphasis on a dynamic driver, you would have more rumble and just, just a more present low base. Obviously, with that, there is no bloat or upper bass bleed and bass never sounds muddy or influences the other frequencies in a negative way. Midrange is also very clear and very open sounding, but it tends to be heavily upper midrange focused. Again, just like the ZS10 Pro 2, it's really not a laid back or a thick sound, but it's focused on delivering an extremely clean and sharp picture. So what does that mean? It means that a big part of the midrange is kind of recessed, especially the parts where you get a fuller and natural sound. Um, with that, male vocals, for example, are thinner. A lot of instruments do miss some heft behind them and female vocals are emphasized. I do admit, I still think it's done better than, for example, on the z 10 Pro 2 even though the graph looks really extreme. It actually sounds acceptable if you like this very clear and open sound. In my opinion, it's not shouty, it's just really focused on the upper registers of sound. And while it looks extreme on paper, it sounds different. It sounds actually quite acceptable here. Travel is, well, it's emphasized and at least for me, it's borderline fatiguing. But just like the mid-range, it's very detailed and very open sounding. There is a noticeable sharpness to the sound that is sometimes less noticeable with some songs, but can make other songs pretty exhausting to listen to, especially where instruments get that kinda scratchy sound sometimes or vocals get easily sibilant. Still, the resolution is awesome. And even though I do think Obviously, it's a bright IEM. The treble seems to be well-tuned and it just does not shove peaks in your ear to fake a certain level of detail and have this unbalanced treble sound. I do think there is no unnecessary sibilance. Like, yes, with sibilant records, it's really sibilant, but it's not on every song. It's bright, but I just did not have as much difficulties to listen to this as I thought I would have. It's also very easy to hear even little things. For example, the stick hitting the snare drum or tom-toms and the tail reverb of cymbals. And the staging is fantastic for an IEM. You can easily pinpoint everything within the stage. The imaging is exceptionally exact. I do have to say there's quite a bit of an artificial touch in both midrange and treble. It does not bother me that much because I can accept the sound signature that the AS10 Pro has. But in all that clear and forward treble and upper midrange sound of the AS10 Pro, there's quite a bit of naturalness missing. It almost seems a bit too clean, too sharp. Otherwise, it's still a well-tuned IEM for that purpose. And obviously they intended to do that and had some thoughts put into this. And if you value very clear and sharp picture of your music and detail and a very controlled sound, then it's pretty good, I would say. So that was the review of the AS10 Pro. I hope that was kind of helpful. And yeah, hope to see you next time. Goodbye.